welcome to today's episode of Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have a uh, comic book artist, and I'm not going to lie, I did not realize how many companies you worked for. Yeah, there. I know. It's <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> uh, Chad Hunt. Chad, tell us about yourself. Ah, my name's Chad Hunt. I am, well, I don't do it much anymore, but I was a comic book anchor for uh, Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image. Uh, holy cow! What was that? Uh, you you did Fem Force, Fem Force, uh, AC Comics. Yeah, you did. Um, uh, and I just lost. Uh, holy cow! There's a lot of them. Dark Horse. Hey, did I say Dark Horse? Yeah, you said yeah. You said Dark Horse because you did. Uh, yeah. But man, I did. Like I said, did not realize. I knew you'd done a bunch. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like going through your thing, and it's like, uh, you work for Defiant. Yeah. You worked for Malibu. Yeah. DC. You did yeah. trading cards for Wetworks and Evangeline. Yeah. You did Top Cow. You've done yeah. Moonstone. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, a lot of them, everywhere. man. There's a lot of them. Those were the good old days. Good old days. The salad days, as it were. To quote so, uh, Nick Cage. There you go. So, I, I, first off, I... I I, I, uh, you donated a picture a, a couple years back for one Comic Con, and uh, it was the only thing that I put in for the raffle for, <laughs> and, and, and oh, I, won. I won. It oh, is okay. hanging up in the shop. So cool, it, it, cool. that Batman you did, and it is hanging up the shop. Um, you're you're also you're in production now. You're doing st uh, work for. Uh, uh, gruesome magazine you're doing some yeah. uh work for some uh wreck havoc productions yeah wreak havoc is our uh little film uh side project uh little film uh, production company that we have and uh, we do mainly short horror films um and um and it's kind of uh we're, we're getting into other stuff now we've done a drama a couple of dramas actually with with some horror overtones and uh but we're we're all four of us we just love horror and um and decided to do that and it's it's working out working out pretty good we've done some really cool interesting project and and i've learned a lot too i love i love making movies now so go figure different well, phases of life man i just oh yeah it, it's it's one of the ones where um i got i got given a, a movie to, that I was supposed to work on uh, a short. I was doing a short for an anthology film, mm -hmm. and uh, it just kind of fell apart. And this is this is my curse. I, I don't know if it's me personally, um, but every time I get ready to make a movie, I am like legit days away. I had a cast, I had locations, and then people started spacing on me. Actors oh. started. Well, well, well. I can't do it. Can you reschedule it for a different time? I'm like, no. I was like, I, I got this, and it just it just kept snowballing. And now I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm working on them. I I left that, and it's bad because I that was a sure thing. That was the movie was going to get made. The movie was going to come out. It was going to be on, I think, Tubi. You know, it it had it was going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I walked away from it, and I'm like, I'll just work on my own. That way I can work on my own. I can do it with the people I know. Mm -hmm. I can I can deal with that stuff. And I'm like, eh. And then I can work on my own time. I don't have a deadline. Yeah. Which yeah. I absolutely love not having a deadline. When they give me a deadline, I think I just sort of probably should just shot myself in the foot then. <laughs> <laughs> away from it. That's the nature of that, though, man. Independent film is like, um, it's not like making movies for studios. You don't really have contracts to hold people to their word mm -hmm. if they're going to show up and... And people flake and, and um, they think because I, I guess they think because it's independent and low budget that, you know, I can either do this or not do this. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't help us out uh, at all. Uh, we've had to recast stuff that we've shot almost the complete film and then have to turn around and recast it because the actors didn't want to come back to work and, and, and that kind of thing. It's a pain in the ass, but it's, it's, it's a love hate thing. Cause I love, I love doing that now. And, um, yeah. so, well, you go, you go from, uh, uh, working in comics 
to now working in film. Uh, how did that transition happen? Um, accidents. Uh, by accident, actually. Um, I have a, a couple of friends that were doing it, and um, I became good buddies with them, and, uh, and uh, they ended up asking me to write we do a film, horror film fest every year too, the Wreak Havoc Horror Film Fest. And we do a commercial for it every year. And it's usually got a little storyline and we film it or whatever. And uh, so I was asked to write one, one year. So I did that and it worked out pretty good. And it went from there to uh, directing, just hanging around sets and stuff and watching how it's done. And I was like, this is just like drawing comics, man. You pick, yep. your, pick your shot and... That's what you put on film and just like comics. So um, um, I actually, I went on to direct um, a short film and after producing for a little while and, and then writing, um, directing that short film was just one of the best experiences of my life. And so I'm, I was like, man, I, this is cool. I want to do this, you know? Yeah. I, so it's not a full-time gig, but, um, it's something I love doing, and um, I have a day job, I guess you, you'd call it. But um, anyway, uh, but it's just a great a great time, and I, I'm actually having I have more fun doing that than than I did in in comics. Comics sort of became a job, yeah. almost. Once you see how the once you see how the cookies are made, <laughs> and all the the bad shit that goes along with uh oops uh, can i say that yeah you're you're yeah, we don't worry about it you're allowed cussing okay so, cool yeah <laughs> but um yeah it's uh dealing with uh, editors dealing with other artists dealing with is it it became more problems than it was worth and i wasn't having fun anymore plus you know it was right around the time that um comics started just kind of not selling as many as they used to but those re residual checks were coming in less and less and less everything i mean i was working on x-men books at the time and i was it was pretty good money but it just started dwindling and dwindling and dwindling and i was like man this, i don't see how you can make a living in it anymore so i just kind of went down other paths but i still love comics i still you know but. i know i know so many Come, but guys who walked away, well, didn't walk away. They'll still do books, but they make all their money at cons. Yeah. They do commission work. That's where they make all their money. Yeah. That's where I make all any all my money in comics and stuff is commission work. And um, I and I almost would rather do that because you're doing um, something different all the time, and um, it's I don't know you you're dealing with an individual instead of a big corporation or a company and and uh where it's just kick it out kick it out kick it out um and it's something you can spend your spend time on and really make it good for the customer and and um so i enjoy commissions a lot more than i did comics yeah and one of the things i've noticed is that i've talked to some other artists that <clears throat> when disney bought marvel uh they basically a lot of their artists are now overseas or uh, in South America because yeah. the page rate, they can pay them a lot less. Mm -hmm. And there's, because, you know, the state, the cost of living is so much cheaper where they these guys are so they can pay them. Exactly. You know, they get half the page rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're if making that. it like bandits. Uh, yeah. I remember, um, God, it's been a bunch of years back. Uh, Francis, I was talking to Francis Manipal at, mm -hmm. I want to say Pittsburgh Comic Con. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I thought I was making great money in comics. And he goes, then I moved to America. And he goes, I lived in the Philippines and then I moved here. He goes, yeah. then this is shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in a lot of cases, the art was shit. I mean, it wasn't up to... I grew up with Jim Starlin and, uh, you know, all the old school guys and hung around with them at cons and stuff. And I, I learned a lot from those guys. The... Um, mm -hmm. Um, even going further back, Dick Ayers and, and Dick Giordano, um, guys like that, that, um, uh, were just, I, those were my heroes, you know, Herb yeah. Trimpey, uh, guys like that, guys like that, man. Uh, um, 
were legendary to me. I mean, I just looked up to them, you know. Um, now, if I go to a convention and I'm looking around, I don't know half the artists, you know. I don't, I don't know who they are. Uh, all the art looks the same to me in a way, um, with, with the exception of a few, you know, I'll yeah. say um, it was really good. But I'm a big, big, big fan of uh, 70s and 80s Marvel, even 60s Marvel. Um, I could read those over and over and over again and never get tired of them. And yeah. um, that's just the, that's the aesthetic that I grew up around and I learned from those guys. And I was always there at the cons asking questions and 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 stuff like that. And I uh, learned a lot, you know, show, showing my portfolio and everything. Um, it was less comic artist as rock star status, I guess you'd say, um, which I don't even know if it's like that anymore. Probably not. But. It can't be because, I mean, yeah, you still get your, your Jim Lee, your Todd McFarlane and stuff like that. But you're right. I've I've been collecting my entire life. I I don't I I took like six months off in my early twenties because I was too busy partying for that six months. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I I went back to it, and uh, people ask me, they're like, "I've read X Men my entire life. I don't remember not reading X Men." Mm -hmm. And they're like, "Do you still read it?" I'm like, "Yeah." I was like, "But I legitimately from like month to month, I forget what happens." Yeah. Because it's it doesn't keep me, but I've I've collected so long. I feel like if I stopped, I would probably have a heart attack or something. <laughs> but uh, you know, but you could ask me. You know, I grew up with John Byrne, George Perez, you know, Herb Trampy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, I could tell you what happened in a book that came out forty years ago, yeah. but I can't tell you what happened in a book that came out two months ago. Yeah, and that's bull. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Everybody goes, oh, you're just getting old. I'm like, no, I can tell you minute details that I specifically remember on those books because they stood out. You know, each artist was his own, had his own style. And, mm -hmm. and, um, I could tell who drew something just by looking at it. You know, yeah. this is, this is John Burns pencils and, and this is Tom Palmer inking him and they, I knew all that stuff. Oh, yeah. When, when, when you could sit down and look at, at John Byrne, you go, okay, this is John Byrne. This is John Byrne and Terry Austin. This is John Byrne inking his own stuff. Mm -hmm. This is John Byrne. And you could tell yeah, the difference. And you between, could tell. Yeah. Holy crap. Same way with uh, Starlin. Um, mm -hmm. You talked about if you look at stuff he inks himself, mm -hmm. it looks completely different from the inks that, that somebody else does. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, man, it's yeah. bad. Um, his book came out, what was it? Something, so I can't remember. It's bad. Uh, something in order, and it was so, I can't remember who was ink, but it, it looked off. Yeah. And I'm like, I so I go back and read old issues of Warlock and and uh, stuff like that. I'm like, this was done 40 years ago, and this was done a year ago. Mm -hmm. And the artwork from 40 years ago looks a hundred times better than the artwork. That it, was yeah, it does. And that was the cool thing about comics to me is. Who's doing this book? Who's doing it? Because you, you, you got excited when you heard John Byrne's going to be doing Superman. Man, I it blew the blew my brain that he was going to go work for DC and, and and draw Superman and write Superman. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I used to get excited about. You know, um, different different art teams, but the art teams would back then lasted longer. You know, there were huge runs, yeah. and uh, and you got used to that, and it just and you could see the artist, how they would progress artistically. And uh, it was, that was amazing to me to s sit there and read and look at. We, we, we just had that legit discussion a couple days ago with my son. As we were talking about runs of comics, I was like, I grew up with Chris Claremont's run on X-Men was like my thing. Mm -hmm. And you look at that and literally like, five big artists in like 15 years mm -hmm. and now you get probably a different artist every two or three issues yeah and there's no consistency to it and you're just like man yeah and that's and that, it, a shame man because yeah. you look at those artists that worked on there paul smith john ramita jr uh john byrne of course dave cockrum Sylvester, Jim Sylvester, Lee, yeah. that all those artists just stood out mm -hmm. in their own way, and 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 that was that was the cool thing about. It. I can't wait to see 
you know, Sylvester draw Wolverine. How that's what's it going to look like, and that kind of thing. And that was just the wonder of comics to me. Now you, you open it up, and they all look like coloring books, uh, colored with Photoshop, and it just it doesn't do anything for me. I don't see any, uh, but yet it takes takes them longer to do that, you know. And yeah. uh, I'm I'm sounding like an old sour grapes old man. Get out of my yard. Give me my ball. I'm keeping your ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were sitting there talking and we were like what, what we had a kid yesterday legit yesterday he goes what's your favorite spider-man storyline i goes it's the last hunt it's craven's last hunt mm -hmm. and he goes that's that's like that's the one that has always stuck with me forever i was like probably before that is the death of gwen stacy but that one i wasn't there for because that was actually before i was born but mm -hmm. i read it in the uh uh like collected books and stuff like that right. Marvel tales and whatnot mm -hmm. and i fell in love with that storyline and you go back now and it's like there's nothing big there's nothing definite there's nothing every you know anybody dies they come back a month right. Late. right you, nothing is there's no you know you actually felt like there was peril mm -hmm. and now there's no peril yeah and you know well they and, keep bringing everybody back yeah and that and you know, even even when they had a fill-in artist, I'm reading an old issue of X Men the other day, and the fill-in artist was Barry Windsor Smith. And yes. was like, that was their fill-in guy. Barry Windsor Smith <laughs> was a fill-in artist, uh, and it's, uh, it's insane. Well, one of the things too is Marvel can't really afford those artists anymore. The, in the current situation that they're in, they they really can't afford to pay all those big names now, and so and like you said, they're getting the other art for cheap. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's that's another thing. I'm sure if they thought they were going to make a million bucks on a book, they, they'd slap one of those big name artists on there. But uh, nobody, uh, not a lot of people want to work for them. Some of the old professionals that used to come in um, or used to be there, they don't, they can't make any money. You know, they can't make any money. Well, they turned them down too. I know that John Byrne has been, he, has been doing an x-men comic on his own forever that's like his like warm-up stuff is he mm -hmm. draws a, an x-men comic mm -hmm. he basically from when he left <clears throat> he has continued a x-men storyline in his universe and he's yeah. like he went to marvel and was like hey i've already done this would you, would you publish it and they're like no i'm like that would be, but they yeah. don't want to publish it. Uh, yeah, uh, they, there's a lot of bad blood between Marvel and, and John Byrne, and and they're they're they don't want to let go of, of that, you know, uh, and that's a shame. You, you can't put something like that aside to make money, you know. That yeah. a book like that would skyrocket right now. Yep. Um, you know, get Terry Austin on it, inking it, or another good inker on there, it would go crazy, you know, yep. sales wise. Oh yeah. Well, we're talking about Mark Silvestri though. He came back cause DC hired him mm -hmm. and he did uh Batman Joker and oh, it yeah. was okay. And it yeah. was like, it looked really pretty, mm -hmm. but it was like, you know, you think it was going to be an event and DC just kind of dropped the ball with it. And I don't mm -hmm. know why you would hire somebody of that caliber and just kind of with it, but yeah. Yep. As we ramble on about comics, but um, <laughs> so, so I, I got, first I got, first love i mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to it is hard to walk away from comics i've like i said i've i thought i was going to once and and uh that was probably holy crap i've sold off almost my entire collection at least twice since yeah <laughs> back uh, um, one book i still will buy all the time is fantastic four because i have all of the issues except number one and and um not all of them are great around the 120s, 130s. They're not great, but I have all of them, you know, and I will always buy that because that's my favorite. I um, still read Fantastic Four. I'm a huge fan of Fantastic Four because it, and right now they've actually got somebody who understands the family dynamic mm -hmm. and they embrace the whole familyness of the Fantastic Four. And I'm like, yeah. that's actually smart. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was reading an old issue of Fantastic Four. 
it's, it, it is beat to shit and back. We'll see. I, I legit when I at my comic shop, I keep beater copies so I can just read stuff instead of yeah. Digging. yeah. God dang it, why not I quit? It's the Barry Windsor Smith fill-in issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> ah, there it is. It was at the bottom of the stack. Uh, issue seventy-five. Yes, yeah. and it is legit falling apart. Mm-hmm. But I don't care because I got to read an original, almost sixty-year-old book. <laughs> I know. I know the feel. I've wasted most of my twenties collecting the Fantastic Four. Going back and collecting the Fantastic Four. I just love that book, and it all started with Stan and Jack, Stan Lee mm-hmm. and Jack Kirby. Uh, I love that artwork and Joe Sennett might as well put him in there because he had a lot to do with how that book looked as well. But that's just, to me, that's comics, Mm -hmm. high adventure, drama, comedy, and, um, even, and it's just, it had it all. And, um, I I will always love that book. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one I still to this day, and I, I probably couldn't tell you how many runs of it I have or at least big chunks I have because I OCD collect the John Byrne run of Fantastic Four. So yeah. anytime I see one in a dollar box or a 50 cent box, I pull it out, I throw it in mm-hmm. the pot. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I got a copy of that good or that one. Mm-hmm. So what yeah. is put it inside? <laughs> and it's, that's the second best run after Stan and Jack, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, is John, John Byrne's run on that. Yeah. Um, Death, Death awesome. Awesome stuff. Love to, to me, I always based an artist, if he's good enough, if he does a good Ben Grimm of the thing, then he was okay with me. He could draw Ben or Johnny and Reed and Sue the way he wanted to, but if he could draw a great Ben Grimm, uh, I was in. You know, I was in. Two, two people that I loved their Fantastic Four or their look of the thing was Art Adams mm-hmm. and Bernie Wrightson. Yeah, yeah. And of all people, the guy that did created Swamp Thing does a great thing. So he does a great thing. So, um, <laughs> so it, being a comic book artist, um, do you storyboard your own movies? Like, give yourself uh, the, a little. I I pretty much have the storyboards in my head, and uh, I haven't had to do it. Yeah, I probably would on a, like a longer feature if I ever do one, um, which I'm writing one now, but. Uh, probably would have to have some kind of storyboards. I, the cinematographer that we have is, we kind of have feel the same on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I can explain to him what I want and just, if need be, I can just sketch something out on a piece of paper real quick and show him and, and he kind of knows what I'm talking about. So, um, but to me, bef- before I go in, I try to have every shot in my head. And if I'm writing it, I'll put little notes to the side of what, what I want it to look at and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I'd like to do storyboards, like full storyboards sometimes. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I'll probably have to on a feature or something like that. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's nice when you can have that. Right now I'm working on a movie and basically the 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 – the girl I'd like to be the lead actress. I'm working with her. So basically we're just bouncing ideas off of each other mm-hmm. and I'm jotting notes down, you know, I'm putting shit in my phone. Like, ah, dude, yeah, this is what I want to happen. This is what I want to happen. That's, I'm not going to lie. That's one of the nicest things ever is this guy has since I become a voice recorder. I'm like, yeah, I need this to happen in my movie. I don't know how I'm going to get to that point, but mm-hmm. this is what I want. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, and that's, yeah, that's a, that's a thing too. You know, how do you, you think of a good idea and you're going to know, how do I work my way up to that <laughs> that idea or how do I work that in? Yeah. So work, working in film, working in comics, um, you know, now com- movies have been your your, your new love. Um, would you ever, if somebody came up and goes, hey, we need you to fill in and do inks on the newest issue of X-Men, would you, would you, would you take it? Oh, yeah, of course. I would if the if the money's there, yeah, I'd money's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I, I guess without throwing anybody under the bus, is there a, um, a publisher or editor that you absolutely loved working with, and a, a publisher you absolutely hated working with? Um, yes, on both. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, the guy I love the most, I, and I love him to this day, is Jim Shooter. Uh, he gets a bad rap by a lot of people of, of, of 
oh, he's this, and he's that. He's Jim Shooter knows how to sell comics. He knows what to put in the comics to sell them, and and he's just a great uh, teacher and a great mentor. Yeah, you know, he's he's great. Um, when I worked at Defiant, you know, um, I went to visit him in New York one time and just, just had a ball. The guy's fun to be around and he's funny he jokes and laughs and, and, um, loved working there. Loved it. Loved it. Um, it, yeah, <laughs> the one I hated, <laughs> um, I did not have a good time working for DC. Um, I worked on, um, the outsiders for DC inking, inking that book and editorial were just a couple of bastards. I'll, I'll say it like that. I, you go back and look it up. If you want <laughs> the names, I don't know if I'll say the name, but no. yeah, he, just a couple of bastards, man. I mean, they were just full of themselves and, and thought their shit didn't stink, but I had news for them. It did. I think that's the only work I ever did for DC again. Was that I had such a bad time there? W w which run of Outsiders did you do? Um, it was tour I think it was the last six issues, five or six issues of it um, before it ended. The series ended. Not Batman and the Outsiders, but just the Outsiders. Was uh, so so when Batman and the Outsiders became just the Outsiders, you did the, the that run. Yes. Okay, because right. I know that they they brought him back. Was was it Paul Peltier did the artwork, and I can't remember who worked on that at that time. So you worked on it when it was uh, post it was, was uh, Mike Casey Barr. Jones. Yeah, Mike Barr. Casey Jones was the penciler, and I was inking him. And um, I I I just got put through the ringer there, and I didn't even care to work for DC again after that. Uh, I had such a I had a good relationship with Marvel. I had a good relationship with. Um, image you know eric larson and those guys um i didn't really care if i went back to dc or not um that's sad that's yeah. sad you you think that of a company that size who basically made you know would take care of their people but yeah you know. yeah, yeah it's just you'd be surprised you'd be surprised how much a lot of these guys are full of themselves and just oh. think they're um you know, like I said, I always I was kind of fortunate to be hanging around the right the right people and learning a lot of things about how to handle that kind of thing. Um, so it was, um, yeah, I just didn't pursue work from them anymore. I just had had no, I'd have ended up in jail. <laughs> you know, I always hear the horror stories about Jim Shooter, and I've only probably met Jim five, six times over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always been super nice to me. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. He's never been rude. No, nothing. There's other people that I've talked to and, and they're like, Oh, I'm like, he's never been nothing but nice to me. That's yeah. like one of the disappointing things about um, the, the John Byrne, fantastic four run is that I've had bad interactions with John Byrne. Mm -hmm. And I've heard all these horror stories about John Byrne and mm -hmm. I've seen him be a, jerk out and out jerk to people and you know but i've also seen him be super nice so it's like yeah you catch him on a bad day or have a good day whatever yeah um but there's 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 other artists that i will absolutely i'll, I'll walk around their tables to get mm -hmm. to avoid them because i've had never never had a good reaction interaction i've been doing this for 15 so 30 closing on 35 years of being in in the comic book business not mm -hmm. on your end but on the selling right. end right and uh there's certain people that still know me and i've heard okay uh, brian polito uh um lady death people's like oh he owes me money blah, 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 blah. i'm like dude brian's one of the nicest guys i've ever met yeah. in my entire life in comics and uh and he was so nice like one time he's just like you here for the day and i'm like yeah and he goes can you watch my table like, mm -hmm. yeah, I just hung out at the, the Lady Duff booth selling <laughs> comics for him because he had to do some running. And they're yeah. like, you work for him. I'm like, nah, I'm just here for, and he just gave me a stack of free stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. thank you. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've met him a couple of times. He's a, he's one of the good guys. There, there, there are good guys in, in comics, but, but 
uh, people had people should realize that artists are introverts <laughs> for the most part they sit in a dark they sit in a room by themselves and draw for 12 14 hours a day and uh they don't learn social skills <laughs> there's more guys like that than there are um we used to hang around uh at orlando con i don't know if you've ever been to orlando, I've con. Been to orlando con um this was way back. Uh, it used to be a very small con when it first started. And we would hang around, you know, Bill Black from AC Comics, of course. He AC that did the Fem Force and all that. Yep. Mike Zek, John Beatty, back when Secret Wars was a big a big thing. Yeah. And the Punisher, Mike Zek's Punisher and all that. And we would just hang out. And it was just like hanging out with the guys, you know. Yep. And um have fun laughing and 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 it was just a good time um so yeah i've been fortunate to hang around and know some very good guys in the business um there's people out there that will act one way to your face and behind your back it, it's that's something else world yeah. yeah i mean that's i say that like it's a special thing or something but yeah. it, it's like any job you know, uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff, any jobs like that that has your assholes that, that do stuff like that. But I, I, for the most part, mine have been great interactions with people. I used to love talking to the old guys, man, like Marty Nodell, who created uh, Green, Green Lantern, Lantern and and, yep. and, and all those boy. Yeah, yeah, man. And he, him and his wife were just amazing, you know, to sit there and hear those stories and everything. So, Oh, yeah. It's it's. It's, it's fun going back and look at some of the stuff. It's like trying to explain to the new guys that are getting into comics and going to conventions now. It's like, you guys don't understand. When I started going, it was a completely different world, man. These guys would hang out and bullshit with you. You could go to the hotel bar mm -hmm. and get drinks with them. And, you know, we had bar con. You know, yeah. that was common. You'd hang out mm -hmm. with these people. And, um, you know, I, I've legit sat down and had it had – a 30 minute conversation with Stan Lee before, you know, the whole Marvel mm -hmm. movie thing blew up. And I was like, everybody's like, well, how much did it cost you? It's like, not a nothing, damn thing. Dude. I just hung out with him. Isn't that the coolest? That is just yeah. the coolest. You know, I'm like, you know, I, I, I think I want to say I met Jack Kirby at his last ever convention. And I want to say that was Chicago 92. Mm hmm. Maybe I believe that was the year, and super nice guy. And I'm I'm so happy to this day that I and the worst part about this I don't even think I have the book anymore that I got signed because I think I had to sell it because you know, bills and normal human life comes in the shit and then you end up having to sell yeah. stuff. You do, so yeah, um, then super nice. Um, probably the only guy that I've met that was kind of a jerk was uh, Bob Kane. Yeah, and he's an asshole. Yeah, and he was an asshole. He wasn't an asshole, but <laughs> but yeah, but you know, just, uh, um, the Busemas were super nice. Mm -hmm. uh, um, goddamn, um, Joe Sinnott, super nice dude. I've got yeah, a bunch he, of he's amazing, man. He's he's I love that guy. The fact that he was still doing regular work at like ninety two years old, you're mm -hmm. just like, you know, you can retire, man. You yeah. take a break from this, yeah. stuff, man. One of the highlights of me doing comics and everything was I did the uh, Joe Sennott inking challenge, the oh. ink, the Inkwell Awards do every yeah I yeah, think yeah, it's every right. year, and I did a Spider Man and a Wolverine uh, that he penciled and a lot of other artists did too, and that was just oh man that was just an amazing thing to be involved in, but yeah I, yeah I I love the old guys I love them I, I really do because it's not not the same now. So, so do you have a favorite work that you've done for yourself, of yourself? Um, I mean, of yourself, but you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm partial to my Wolverine run, uh, inking Val Simix. Um, first thing I ever did for Marvel. And, uh, man, I, I still remember to this day how nervous I was. And uh, I've never felt that way doing comics at all, you know. Uh, this, is, this is the big time. All my buddies that were in comics were calling me going – just what whatever's there just trace the lines i said i'm not a tracer i hate kevin smith ever said brought that up that anchors are tracers i hate that and uh it was just it was a happy time an exciting time 
to be doing it. And, uh, and especially at the height of it where they were, they'd sell millions and millions of copies a month and this there was just it was like a the the new frontier or something you know was opening up the gold rush or whatever and um it was just a great great time to be working in comics and i'm I'm glad i was there i feel very fortunate uh, that i was there have you ever thought about doing like your own books or anything doing something on your own still yeah yeah i've um i've written a series um, I don't want to draw it or ink it or anything like that. I just want to write it. And, and, um, uh, I got about two more issues to go and, um, I want to have that, have the series done before I shop around for artists and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, I'll try and publish it on my own. I don't, you know, that's or crowdfund it or do whatever. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You got, you got the, you got the, uh, what is the, the, you know, you've been around for a long time. You got that whole lineage of, of people you've worked with and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, you should do yeah. great with that. Yeah. Um, so you still are you still in the, the convention circuit at all? No, not really. Um, I still have a good collection of people that I do commissions for. Mm-hmm. And um, not not too many that I can't handle it. You know, just enough where when they want something, I can call them and, and give them whatever they want um i actually haven't been to a con in in years man it's been quite a few years since i've been to a con i'm thinking about going to heroes con uh this year and um just to see who's going to be there and go around and say hi to some old friends but um but yeah i haven't been to too many cons in a while. Do, you miss, do you miss doing the cons or are you just like uh, you're, you're, or are you like me and just like uh, i'm done i'm i'm glad i can stay home on the weekends <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, that's how it got for me i think i kind of got burned out on on them uh i couldn't really enjoy the convention at all um and i i used to um when i first started doing it i, I really liked it and i would do little seminars on the side at the cons like inking in you know tutorials and stuff like that and uh which i enjoyed i enjoyed doing stuff like that and um but yeah it got to be like uh, you know if i look at one more if i got to draw one more wolverine (laughs) you know i'm gonna i'm gonna explode but but uh but yeah my my buddy uh darby Watkins. i don't know if you know darby um Darby is, uh, he's the one that told me, he's like, if you go and you get commissions done, pick a character that not many people will get done so that the artists aren't tired of it. Yeah. So he gets, he does, he gets Amethyst Princess of the Gem World. And he oh. has, oh, wow. And, and Darby's right around my age and he has just portfolios and everybody who's done it. And you're just sitting there looking at it it's like, oh, that's, J. Scott Campbell did one for you. Oh, hey, Art Adams did one for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just start looking through this stuff, and I'm like, "What are you going to do with this when you pass away?" Because he has no kids, no, uh-huh. no wives, I'm like that. And I was like, "He's like, I don't know." I'm like, "Man, I was like, my kids, it with you. <laughs> my kids are already like, so what do we get, Dad?" I'm like, "Well, I don't know. You get whatever's not nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> you get to come through all of this, yeah, because this is your inheritance. This is." <laughs> All this is yours. All this is yours. And, well, actually, this and then uh, 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 my uh, my room in at my shop that's floor to ceiling full of comics too. And I'm like, mm. that's yours too. So don't forget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, so I picked uh, Satana, the old Marvel character, mm-hmm. and people are like, who? And exactly. I've actually had to draw Zatanna. And I walked up and I looked at the table and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not Satana. And they're like. <laughs> you said Satana, not Zatana? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, it's still a good piece of artwork. I'll take it. But uh, it's not the yeah. one I wanted. <laughs> uh, have, have, you ever, have you ever done that? Just done done a commission piece? And then the people be like, yeah, it's not what I wanted. It's not. Um, what I would usually do is do get a list together. And then they would meet me there. And this is what I ended up doing because it's got to be easier is months out i would draw the commissions if they were going to be there and i think mm-hmm. a lot of artists do this now but um 
so so that way I can stay in contact with them through the process of, of drawing. How's this look? How's this look? You want something different? You want something added? So it was kind of took all the guesswork out of it. So when they get there, they already know what it looks like and nice. they're already excited about it. So see, that's nice. I, I've had commissions done and I just told him, I was like, okay, um, I wanted Red Skull on the cover of the Death of Captain America book. That's all I told him. And uh, time goes by, time goes by, time goes by. I forget that he even has this book for me. It actually has a couple other things commissioned for me too. And um, all of a sudden, my birthday, I come home from work and there's this big package sitting on my porch and I'm like, huh, what the hell? Somebody sent me a present. And I open it up. It's all the commissioned artwork that he had done. Oh. And I pull it out. I'm like, oh, that's sweet. Cause he did a werewolf book. So there's this guy like mid transformation. I'm like, mm. that's awesome. And I go and there's a, um, uh, secret invasion. So he has a, a Wolverine, like turning into a scroll mm. and I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And then I pull that death of captain America and there's the red skull. He went all out. Uh, standing there in the middle with his hands behind his back looking and like the buildings and all the flags are hanging from the buildings and there's the bombers flying overhead. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow. Okay. You man. Then I've sent them off and I get them back and I'm like, Oh, hmm. I spent <laughs> money on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh and, and and I'm not going to throw it. And, and the one that I was most, most disappointed in uh, was a, is still a big time artist. And I was just like, you look like you took five minutes on this. Mm -hmm. And I paid you like a hundred bucks for the yeah. stupid like, head sketch. And I'm like, no, yeah. I know you get paid a lot more than that, that a hundred bucks, but it's still like, that was a big chunk of money for me back then. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a, uh... And people hate paying it. Also, a lot of people hate paying it. They want a lot of good stuff on the, on the page for for very little money. Okay. Um, I used to get yelled at a lot because kids used to come up to the table and say, "Can you just draw me a Spider Man?" And you know, and I don't have any money, but just a quick sketch or something. And and I couldn't just do a quick sketch. You know, uh, it had to have a little pizzazz to it or something. Cause I, you know, I, I've been to cons with no money as a little, oh, as yeah. a little kid, you know, I know what that feels like. And, and hopefully the kid will always remember it. You know, I have pieces now that I see that, of mine that people have that, uh, I did not draw for them, you know, uh, but it's made its way around to different owners or whatever. And, and it's weird. It's a weird feeling, but at the same, at the same time, I was like, man, somebody got some use out of out of this, these drawings, but I, I loved when kids came up and did that, even though I would get yelled at by the other guys. And what are you drawing free for? For because uh, I remember how it was, you know, I remember, uh, well, you know, you know, I've done, I've done th this is funny because I'm, I'm gonna compare this, since, even though it's not really a comparison. Uh, when years upon years ago, I happened to be at a bookstore, regular like bookstore, bookstore, not a, not a comic shop, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking through the comics and this kid's sitting there and he's like, takes this one book and he slides it inside of his coat and he goes and he goes to walk around and I walk around and he just plows right into me and he mm -hmm. looks up to me and I'm like, are you going to steal that? And uh, he's like, no. And I went, I was, but not now. And then he's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I went, uh. I was like, come here. And we walked him up to the counter and this is a kid. I don't know who he is. And mm -hmm. I was like, hand him. I, and it was like, it was back when comics were like a buck 50 or something like that. I handed mm -hmm. him a dollar, like a, you know, a couple bucks. I'm like, give this to the lady. And he hands it to the lady and he walks off. And my buddy looks at me and he's like, why did you do that? I was like, because that kid could have stole anything else. He could have, stole gum candy a porno mag whatever he stole a comic mm -hmm. and i was a comic book dealer <laughs> yeah. yeah that kid will remember and then he'll continue to buy comics and <laughs> yeah i will make yeah. money and it, it's yeah. it's keeping the new generation and uh i think that's one of the problems we're at right now is there's no new generation picking up comics mm -hmm. 
it's still all the the guys who are investors now and yeah. it's like yeah comics know. are not for investing these days i mean you you gotta love comics to, to you know these days um yeah. back in the back in the day when i was working on x-men and 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 all the X books, I, it was, you could understand why, you know, they thought they were going to be rich, you know, buying these books, you know, and, but they, what they didn't understand is, well, the more of them there are, the less they're worth, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, the only reason they are uh, expensive and valuable is there aren't many of them around, you know? Yep. Um, but now there's still not many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not selling so hot, I guess. But no, it's they. They sell okay, but it's one of the ones where, if this would have been back in the day, every book that Marvel and DC put out that would be canceled because they don't do enough. Yeah, because that, they're, they're, you know, they're selling millions back in the day, and now they're selling tens of thousands. Yeah. And, now this only sold half a million. We let's we're canceling that, and yep, you know that's. That's how it was back then. We were laughing the other day because um, I'm a fan. I love the new universe. I do. Oh, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. It's mostly fun. I don't get me wrong. There's a couple books that are just, but I look at that. I'm like, and I look at, and I found the numbers. Somebody had published what each book did, and they were all doing good numbers, mm -hmm. but not the numbers that marvel thought they should have done mm -hmm. and now i'm looking at them and i'm like you realize if these comics were doing the numbers now i was like these would be some of the like top books exactly that <laughs> exactly yeah but and, uh, uh, and and it's, it's funny because my wife's like so how much of this stuff's worth money i'm like mm. the good stuff's over there on the shelf the stuff that's not worth probably much anything is in all these other books uh, <laughs> yeah and uh I told her, I was like, there's one book that you can't, two books you can't get rid of. Those, those got to stay in the family and those will be worth a lot of money one day. And mm -hmm. uh, she's okay. So when I, when you die, we're paying the house off. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh man. So we're, we've gone on comics for a while. So, and movies and you're doing other stuff too. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk I about do, some of this other stuff you're doing. Well, I do podcasts. I love horror movies, man. Especially old universe. I'm a big Universal Monsters fan. Um, but horror in general general, I, I just dig it. And um so I do a podcast on Gruesome Magazine called uh, Decades of Horror. On it's three different podcasts. And one's called the Classic Era, which we cover everything from the beginning of film up to 1969. Then we have a 70s era where we cover all horror from the 70s, uh, some of those old Hammer films and and stuff like that. 60s, uh, well, that's in the Classic Era, but and then the 80s, which in my is just the epitome of the horror. <laughs> if you wanted a crazy out there horror movies that were just Mind blowing the eighties is is was is that so yeah we do we do those those podcasts and um, we published some magazines that lasted about three three issues I think that we used to cover local um, or independent film like it wasn't like Fangoria or anything like that we cut, mostly tried to stick to supporting independent horror movies yeah, yeah. stuff like that and um, you know and. So yeah, I've been involved with those guys now for quite a while, eight years or something. And, um, they're like second family to me. Every one of them, I, I love every one of them. And we just have a blast on there to, for, for me on some of those older movies, I get up there and I MST three three K the crap out of them, you know, and, and, uh, <laughs> just make fun of them and to the chagrin of everybody else on the podcast that might be taking it a little more seriously. <laughs> with me. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 that's something else I got into that I really like doing and talking about um, old horror movies and, and putting that useless information to good use, you know. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, see, me, me and you, like, uh, brothers separated by miles here. You comment <laughs> books. Uh, I, I absolutely 
the worst part about it is the Roku channel has the Universal Monsters channel. Yeah. And I watch that stupid channel constantly. I couldn't tell you how many times in the last month I've watched Son of Frankenstein, uh, Evils of Frankenstein, uh, Night Night Creatures, because uh, it seems like those are always the ones that are on when I go to yeah, watch them. Yeah. But I can't help it. It's Universal and, yeah. and Hammer. And I'm like, it was two of my favorite things. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. I think Tubi has an all Godzilla. Oh, yeah, they do. Now. And now if I can't turn the TV on because if I run across it, I'll have to sit down and watch the whole thing. You know, I'm a big Godzilla fan, too. I love Godzilla. I love Godzilla. Yeah. It's, you watch Minus One? Hell, yeah, about three times. Oh, that's Twice so in color and once in black and white. I haven't watched it in black and white because our, our, our theater didn't have it that long and i watched a couple of the movies but man it was so fun i i'm sitting here um they announced it and there was no place close when they when they said it was because mm -hmm. it was gonna be a fathom event movie yeah. at first and um there was shit going on and and my wife had started a new job and um i couldn't get out at seven and that, that's when it was supposed to be on at seven and, mm -hmm. and my buddy calls me up and he's like hey he goes he goes Godzilla's playing here in town. I'm like, hell yeah. I was like, what What time? I was like, because I can't make it. I was like, man, it's like, they get, tell me they have another showing besides 7. Mm -hmm. He goes, 7.45. I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah. I was like, so I call my son up. I'm like, we're, we're going to go see Godzilla. He's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, no, we're going to go see Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was such a great movie. It's it's. Uh, I, I had tears in my eyes at the end. It was so moving. And it, the guy was uh with to go see it was like dude are you crying at a godzilla movie and he when to get home gets home he, he tells my wife he goes he was crying the whole time i was like no i wasn't man. I was, crying at the end it I, was uh it was that was one of the best godzilla movies ever made oh my god it's so good yeah hands but, down I, i'm not gonna lie i i get a little little you know in one of the newer Godzilla ones, the legendary films ones. Yeah. And that's when Surizawa walks up to Godzilla when he's dying in the temple mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he puts his hand on him and he looks down at the clock as it blows. He says, goodbye, old friend. Yeah. And, it yeah. and it was like, I mean, literally, it did. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. about it. And I'm like, that's a Godzilla movie, guys. <laughs> that's a yeah. Godzilla yeah. Movie. The, the legendary films have been amazing. So and that Monarch TV series just sort of ties tied all that together uh, between the movies. Just it's an amazing series. Um, I don't know if you saw the TV show Monarch. Yep, I watched Monarch. Yeah. Me and my son um, burnt through just, that. Just a great. It's a great universe. It's a oh yeah, better universe than Marvel is, <laughs> is right now for sure. Well, um, my problem with Marvel right now is this oversaturation. I think they yeah. need to slow down. But yeah. Hopefully that'll be what 2024 is, is the slow down because while we're getting this Deadpool three, hopefully we will slow down. We'll take some of these things off the slate that mm. just are not going to get made like blade. I don't fucking see mm. blade happening. Yeah. Just go back to doing one movie a year. Don't oversaturate. Mm -hmm. Be good. Yeah, I think it'll go back to being good again, but yeah, the, the legendary monster films. Oh my God. I, I, I they made I, it. They made the whole, godzilla universe cohesive and made it interesting you know yeah. they they gave it its own backstory of where these monsters come from and and i love that i just i, I just love it and um um and outside of which i look at that as its own little universe right there uh, because godzilla minus one is on a totally different level um right there what do you think and of shin godzilla loved it Oh, I did too. I loved it. I loved it. That, that was. Uh, I I don't think I was ready for that one. That was one that's like it, he goes back to being the villain. Yeah, he's super dark, and mm -hmm. I thought we were going to get a sequel to that. I'm not gonna lie. I, I wish we would have because it set up a sequel. And yeah. uh, I think it's a standalone now at this point, from what they say. Yeah. But but it, I would have loved to have seen what those little mini people were falling off his tail or coming off. Yeah, his, that's his exactly tail right. Weird stuff like that. Um, uh, I would have loved to seen some kind of continu continuation of that. And uh, yeah. so yeah. 
But uh, Shin Godzilla, oh man. And somebody asked me one time, they're like, when are you going to stop? When are you going to grow up and stop liking Godzilla? I was like, never. I literally have Godzilla tattooed yeah. on my chest. Ain't happening. And I was like, he's not going anywhere. He's close to my heart. That's yeah. why he's yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, oh, go ahead. I, I, I got it. So, I think if I ever commissioned a piece of artwork from you, knowing how much you like Godzilla, it'd have to be Godzilla. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to do that, man. I love, I love Big G. I, I do, and um, it's one of the Japanese uh, monster movies. Are <laughs> one of my big influences growing up. I used to just consume those like crazy. I used to used to be a small one screen theater in the town where I lived, and uh, it was about five miles away from um, my house. Godzilla versus Megalon was had, had come out and my brother and I were like, we got to see this. And my mom's like, I'm not taking you to see that crap. We walked five miles in the place in <laughs> to go see that. And I think Inframan was the other film that they showed back to back. And, uh, that was just the best time walking back. We didn't even realize it was quick as five miles. Cause all we did was talk about how I'm awesome those two it. movies were. I remember my my grandpa taking me to a, a Saturday matinee of Godzilla uh, versus Mecha Godzilla and Terror of Mecha Godzilla mm. double feature. Wow! And you know, because they would just randomly do these like Saturday afternoon, you know, because yeah, in the evening you got your first run movies, and in the, in, the, in the afternoon you'd get your kids' cartoons, your movies like that, um, and then Godzilla movies. And I remember seeing. Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla and Terror Mecha Godzilla mm -hmm. and uh cuz those both I mean Terror Mecha Godzilla came out the year I was born so I definitely did not see that when it came out so I don't mm -hmm. but I'm like that's one of the cool things about all these Godzilla movies now is I can take my kids who my kids are adults now but I'm still like Joe we're yeah. going to go see a Godzilla movie yeah. my son is there mm -hmm. we are going to go see Godzilla yeah. uh, and my son it, loves them too my son will Watch Godzilla movies all day. Yep, we we just and oh man, Godzilla is so so good. Uh, and and I, I've got the Marvel runs. I've got the Dark Horse runs. I got the IDW runs. I've got VHSs. I got DVDs. Um, I don't have laser discs, but I do have Rodan on eight millimeter film. Ooh, wow. I have Rodan, Bride of Frankenstein, uh, the creature, the, the, was it Revenge of the Creatures? So the last creature from the Black Lagoon movie. Walks Among Us. Creature Walks, Walks Among, among yeah, Us. Yeah. And, and, uh, Big I have creature fan too. Sorry. Yeah. And <laughs> I have those on eight millimeter film and, uh, people are like, damn, you're a, an hoarder. And I'm like, no, I just love physical media, man. You can't, mm -hmm. shit will never go away from me. I used to have the eight millimeter Dracula, Frankenstein, and um, I think Creature, two at one point. And then somewhere along the way, I lost track of it. I don't know how, how that happened, but I was a little kid at the time. But yeah, it's, it's, mine's locked in a filing cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I had as a kid I wish I had now. Oh, man. That's literally why I do what I do now. Mm. I'm, I'm buying back my childhood. Yeah. A, a little bit. Of time. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it, you know, with discussing, you discuss the horror movies and stuff like that. Um, what's your go to hammer film? Uh, Curse of Dracula. Curse of Dracula. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your, what's your go to 70s horror movie? Go to seventies is uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, massacre! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, masterpiece. Man. <laughs> I just watched the documentary on that last week, and you're just like, man, how that movie actually got made is insane. Yeah, that's what I love about it. You just look at this. This is the most gonzo thing I have ever seen put on film, and yeah, and the story behind it is, is just incredible. Um, before. I became a podcast before I started doing all these interviews. I was a public access television show. And that's where group therapy came from. Oh, wow. Access show. 
I got to go to um, a horror convention and they had Gunnar Hansen, um, the two, and I, I, I'm drawing a blank on the two dudes that were in the van besides Franklin and Grandpa were there. Mm hmm. And Gunner's one of the was one of the nicest guys you would ever want to meet in your entire yeah. life, which is hilarious because he's always a monster and everything. Yeah. And um grandpa was funny because I was like, Were you really 18? He goes, No, no, I wasn't 18, 19. I was 19. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because you always heard the rumors that he was yeah. just a teenager playing a really old mm -hmm. man. He's like, ah, no, I was 19. Um, and you're just sitting there talking to him, and they're like, Yeah, and they're like, you know, we're, we're legit stuck in this house and they're telling the stories about the, the, you know, fucking, uh, it was like 115 to 120 degrees inside the yeah. house. And yeah. Like, yeah. Holy crap. The food was stinking. The food that was, yeah. The, 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 was yeah. It was rotten but, with flies. <laughs> everything was rotting underneath the sun. Yeah. And then there, there's the, the, the one guy there, they're like, man, all this flesh is, so they made fake flesh. Mm. And then that just, Started stinking because of yeah. what they had to use for it, and you're just like, "Oh my god!" It's, mm -hmm. it's no wonder everybody was screeching and screaming. And well, it's it's, just... it's also why it has all the weird. Um, um, no one knows who has the rights to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre because mm -hmm. Hinkle says he does. Toby Hooper said he did, and then you had some mob guys <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> And that's why there's what one and two are same universe, and then that one on Netflix are supposed to be no is in the same universe as one, but not the same universe as two. Three is in the universe by itself. Four is in the universe by itself. Then you have the prequel and the reboot, which are universal unto themselves. Then you have Texas Chainsaw, which is a direct sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, oh, just. And then you have Leatherface, and you're just yeah, like, yeah. Oh wow, okay. I did like the reboots by um, uh, the prequel and the and the other. See, one. I was Andrew. a fan of the prequel, but I I, I loved that reboot that movie. Uh, yeah, was, yeah. Um, just that trailer where it's all dead quiet. You, mm -hmm. you remember that when the trailer dropped? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that got you ready because you just hear their breathing and you hear the ding, 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 mm -hmm. ding, 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 ding. And you're like, oh, man. And it's like, and then, of course, they brought in uh, John Larroquette again to do the voice yeah, of work. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap. And they find out that he just got paid a bag of weed for the original. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think they had Daniel Pearl as the director of photography again on that one, on that yeah. remake or reboot or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But, um, Good. I, th I thought it was good. I liked it. Yeah. So no. Okay. No. No. Favorite eighties movie. John Carpenter's The Thing, hands down. Damn right. God. Hands down. I mean, that's almost my favorite movie of all time. Hmm. Um. Yeah. No, I know there's a lot of movies out there, but I, there's just something about that that I will watch it over and over and over and over and I love it every time. I understand that because that's a movie I probably watch about five times a year, if not yeah. more. Yeah. And um, somebody asked me one time, they were like, um, what's your favorite uh, John Carpenter movie? And I went, probably The Thing. Mm -hmm. And then all the rest of them would be like asking me, which is my favorite kid that I, <laughs> my favorite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, because man, I love Prince of Darkness. I love Halloween. I love, you know, and it's just, Christine, you're just like oh. that, whole, that whole run in that period of time with Christine, um, all those movies that he was doing around that time were just incredible, incredible yeah. movies. Because even his bad, in his bad movies, you know, because people hate on uh, vampires and uh, Ghosts of Mars, and like, but I still like them. I love those. And, Vamp uh, uh, Ghosts of Mars is nothing but a western. Yeah, you know, with a sci-fi setting you know it, it's and if you look at it like that going in you get it you you well, it vampire, makes sense vampires and vampires western, too it's a western too yeah, yeah. Which, and it's uh, got western music in it like whoa, whoa, yeah you know, they got like uh, almost the marconi freaking which he used for uh um the thing the thing yeah yeah and um, uh, he always wanted to make a, a 
a Western. And I think that was the only way they were going to let him do is have a horror element to it. Uh, I remember an, an interview with him talking about that almost every movie he's ever done has been a Western when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. Even all the way back to uh, um, Halloween, he goes, you have the bad guys coming to town, the bad guys coming to town, the bad guy gets to town, he's got to fight the police or mm -hmm. the, the sheriff, which he does. Mm -hmm. And he, I'm like, yeah, holy shit, Halloween is a Western. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what somebody needs to do is just let him make a straight out western. Yeah. And, Except and for he's, he, he, he did you watch his new new show that he did? Was it Suburban Screams? No. On, on uh, Peacock, I think. It's it's essentially um like unsolved mysteries. Mm -hmm. And he hosts it and it's it's all these weird uh, like uh, um, unsolved crimes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he only directs one episode and he legitimately directed it from his house on his couch. He just had everything streamed right to him. So he filmed it and directed it from his, from his, cause he was too busy playing video games. He's now a vi big video game guy. Yeah. Yeah. He just plays video games all day. And he's like, yeah, I can direct a movie while I'm sitting here doing this. So he did. <laughs> oh my God, John. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, the series is, is a glorified, like six episodes of of uh, unsolved mysteries, but mm -hmm. it's John Carpenter. So. I might have to check it out. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. on. Like I said, I believe it's on Peacock. It's either Peacock okay. or Paramount. So it's on okay. one of those two. Right. But um, oh yeah, I, I just also love John Carpenter. Um, what, what people were claiming that was it Jordan Peele is like the new master of horror and the best horror, li what best living horror director. And John Carpenter's like, I'm still alive. Yeah. Uh, so I don't get Jordan Peele. I'm sorry. I, I he's a I little heavy handed with the messages and stuff. I think in in there, but I think they're okay. I don't think they're great, but I think they're they're not bad. I mean, they're they're not genius. No, I mean, I, I mean, especially Nope. I, I I I got it, but at the end, I was like, okay, no, nah, okay, yeah, it's. Um, Okay, I wasn't impressed. I guess I, I should say I, 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 I like Get Out. Get yeah, out. I, I, I did like Get Out. I get really out. did like Get Out. Us was okay. Mm -hmm. I, it's not what it was. The trailers made it out to be, which whoever made the trailers just kind of. I don't. I don't think they embraced yeah. that. But um, and then when Nope came out. Um, I thought it was a good idea, but mm -hmm. then it gets that end, and it's like, yeah, it's it's big weird air jellyfish thing. Yeah, that, I threw my drink at the screen and said, "Oh shit!" No, I didn't do that. I, was there. I wanted my, my, to. My, my wife was sitting there, and she's sitting there going, and my son were like, "That that thing would not do well against you." And she goes, "Why?" He says, "Man, if it's trying to swallow you, you've got." I'm horrible. I always have at least two knives in my pockets. Mm -hmm. I've had since I first. So you'd be just stabbing the shit out of it in the inside. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'd be dead. Kill it from the inside. <laughs> I was like, but uh, yeah, it's it's premise wise. I I think he's I think he's a a, a good director. They look good. The, the, you know his his direction is is well done. Mm -hmm. I don't think the stories are great. I think yeah. the stories are okay. Yeah. And there's a lot better horror directors out there that I don't think get credit that should. And, you know, we get that. So. Well, horror fans are always complaining about, oh, that wasn't scary. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't good. And, and, but you get movies out that came out like this year or last year, Last Voyage of the Demeter. Phenomenal movie. I love that movie. I haven't uh, seen it yet. Uh, it's just, uh, they took a they took a a little chapter out of the novel yes, of Dracula, chapter and, of Dracula yeah. and made made a movie out of that and it, it's a damn good movie. There were a lot of cool horror movies out uh, last year, especially, um, and that was one that was my number one. Evil Dead Rise. Oh, Evil Dead uh, Rise was oh goddamn. It's a uh, yeah. I mean, just balls to the wall, well, like Evil Dead should be, I guess. Well, 
it was it was so funny because I, I still get people and I had to look at people and they're like, well, it's woke. I'm like, there's one trans character in there and they don't even make a deal about it. I'm like, yeah, fuck. I'm like, I enjoyed that. I'm I'm gonna like when she crawls out of the bathtub and they're like, mommy, and she's mommy's with the maggots mm -hmm. now. And I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck, that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just it just kept going. Literally, I went and seen I went to the drive-in for a double feature, and it was that and the flash. And that's really the only reason I wanted to go was so I could see Evil Dead, Evil Dead Rise in the drive-in. Yeah. yeah. And, it's uh, uh it was a it was a great film, you know. But and well, Evil Dead Rise did good, but uh, Demeter did not do that well, I guess. No. But uh, it should have. I mean, it was a good universal monster uh, movie. See, see, I don't think the, 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 the wanting to reboot the universal monster movies constantly. Yeah. Is, and modernize them. And, that's and modernize them is, is a little, you know... That's like the, the Tom Cruise's mummy movie. Um could have been great. Mm -hmm. I like the girl that they got to play the mummy. Yeah, yeah. I think she was great. And the fact that she was a dancer, so she did the weird yeah. mm -hmm. movements and shit was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But they let Tom Cruise run away with it and let yeah. him be Tom Cruise. So he had to literally run through the entire movie. Mm -hmm. He had to have the 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 love the the uh the love interest that's half his age. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, the constant yeah. running it's so people can't see how short i really am you know i love him because <laughs> i was like ah, i'm 510 bullshit i'm 59 mm. and you're shorter than me um but yeah there, there, there's so much good horror this i i'm i'm a uh, um I'm a big fan of like the, the obscure eighties horror stuff. And like people come to me like, Hey, you know, I'm looking for some movies and I'm like, go watch this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm also one that I've got a, um, I broke down during the pandemic and bought myself a multi-region Blu-ray player. Uh -huh. So I can watch all this stuff. It's not available in the United yeah. States. So I got like the, the house box set that here in America, we only get the first two. Yeah. yeah. And there's, well, we technically get three because we get the horror show, which is the third one, but we never get the fourth one. Mm -hmm. uh, Razorback, which I think is weird. The giant killer pig in the Australian Outback. You remember that one? Yeah, we yeah we covered that on the 80s uh, a while back. That should have done something. It should be something. Russell McCauley, fresh off of doing Highlander, yeah. did a, a giant killer pig movie. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think what it was was... I don't know. Maybe maybe you talked about this on the, on your podcast because I didn't. Um, some people said it made Australians look like hillbilly hicks, and that's why it has so many issues. Is because Australia doesn't like it uh, because of those those uh, um, weird guys that are hunting the kangaroos down to turn them into dog yeah, food. Yeah. yeah, they said it makes them look bad. Like people know it's a movie, well, right? It is a movie. I mean. <laughs> I'm sure there's guys like that uh, that really are over there, just like in America. There's guys yeah. like that, you know. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but it was as style wise, it was an amazing looking film. Oh, uh, yeah. Russell McKay, Mulcahy he was um, somebody that should have actually gone on to do bigger and better things. Um, and I don't know why that didn't happen. Maybe it was the shadow. Hey, I like the shadow. I'm not gonna lie. I, I like it. I like it too. But I think the studio got a hold of it. Mm -hmm. it sort of chopped it up into, and did a lot of interfering on that because it didn't look really like a Russell McKay, McKay movie. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought when I first heard about it, he's the perfect choice for that. He he'll give that a visual style that's not you know nothing's okay. gonna been seen like that yet. But it it just ended up looking like a didn't look like Russell McKay. No. Okay. I, I, I also think that the studio just did that movie because um to be a like a finger to uh Ted Raimi. Dark Sam Man. Raimi. Yeah, because Dark yeah. Man, he did Dark Man as a, a finger to them because they wouldn't let him make the movie. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, fine, we'll, we'll make we'll make the shadow and yeah. we'll bring him in and yeah, well, we got it. So um since you I always love doing this because because you're 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 a movie guy, you're a comic book guy, all that fun stuff. 
Um, so you got to know obscure horror movies. Is there a little bit? Okay. Is there a movie that when people that you just you've got to see this movie? If because you've probably not seen it, you need to watch this movie. Do you have one of those? As far as a terrible movie or no, like a horror movie that you like that that, um... like is uh, like kind of obscure that most people don't know. Oh my gosh! Um, Yeah, Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Oh yeah, the, then the sequel, uh, uh, yeah, Jesse uh, James versus Frankenstein. Yeah, yep. um, that movie, I've always heard of it, never watched it. We just recently covered that on, on Classic Era too, and I was like, oh, here we go. This this is just going to be a piece of '60s shit, you know. And um, but I, growing up, I would sit on the couch with my dad, and we'd watch Bonanza, and we'd watch Gunsmoke. And, and and those kind of TV westerns. Yeah, this had the exact same feel as those TV westerns, but it had Dracula in it. John Carradine is Dracula. Yep, and he was a he was genius in that, and uh, it was a good movie. I don't know how much you could tie this Billy the Kid to the actual Billy the Kid. You know, he's uh, after, after killing twenty one people. Now he's, he's we're supposed to believe he's changed his ways and settled down on the ranch to yep. that kind of thing. But um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun and <laughs> it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, you know, and, and that, I guess that's why I liked it. But uh, yeah, you, that's one I would check out if you'd like that kind of thing. It, it, it felt like one of the first horror Westerns ever. So maybe yeah. John, maybe John Carpenter kind of knows about it, you know, maybe, hopefully it's, yeah. Oh my God. Um, it's funny because because uh, talking about westerns and stuff like that, I grew up on that stuff. My grandpa watched it, so it was it was Gunsmoke and Bonanza, uh, uh, Wanted, uh, Rawhide, all that stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, then, of course, I had to watch the John Wayne movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But as I got older, I went the other way. I went to the like the the uh, Italian spaghetti western movies, yeah, yeah, like Django and and for you know once upon Man a time, no name, yeah. Well, I was like the, my we were sitting talking about it. I was like, why? I was like because the West was not clean. I was like, so them guys, you look at them Italian ones, man. You all can almost smell the guys. Yeah, the exactly, just exactly. So dirty looking. <laughs> and I love I love those too, man. I love that. I've I'll watch those in a heartbeat if if there's only one on TV. And I think I own most of them. The yeah, ones. that's me. Mm-hmm. I uh, I also found that was a, a to be or plex. I was going through one night and I found all the Franco Nero uh, westerns. And literally, I just sit there, and then I realize it's like four in the morning. I'm like, I need to go to bed. I need to yeah. stop watching this. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's a. Uh... Sometimes I feel like I'm getting old too fast and I start trying to cram as much stuff in before the end comes. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got to, man. We're, we, we, you know, we're, I got, got more years behind me than ahead of me. Yep. Got more behind me than in front of me. That's what sucks is in June I turned 50. So it's like, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, it's a milestone. Yeah. That's, uh, I was like, I don't think I'm going to hit 100. So I'm going to say that the good years are behind me and the bad years are coming. Yeah. So, um, so I, I realize how late we're getting here. Um, we're, we're good. We're good. Okay. So, you know, with doing the, 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 the podcast with directing and, and working in film now and, and still doing, um, you know, you know, not, you don't do comedy, but you do, you know, commission work and stuff like that uh and you you, you've got a day job Mm -hmm. too so how the hell you get all this um i guess kind of the way i've taken life (laughs) good time (laughs) management whatever whatever comes you you just jump on it and wait for the next thing to come (laughs) um you know there's a there's a very loose plan (laughs) i guess that i followed that i you know that, that i don't really um I take what comes and try to make the best of everything. And um, I just, I just feel like I can't, I'm not the type of person that can just uh, live regimented, re- regimented. Um, you know, I want there to be some kind of change or a challenge to come along that 
interesting things that are new that I've never done before. And, uh, uh, so yeah, I, that's kind of how I look at everything, you know, it's, and do it without fear, you know, don't, my, my thing is don't be afraid of anything or anyone. Um, you know, and that's how I kind of, I've had to look at life, you know? So, um, yeah. So I, I just, I just take it on and it all seems to work out, you know? Well, usually I only get to ask this question for one genre. Now I can ask it for a couple of genres. Um, if you could play in any sandbox, franchise sandbox, movie and comic, which franchise would you love to play in? Out of movies or comics? Yeah. Um, or both. You can say both if you want. Um, I, I, I want to do comics, but like we talked about earlier, I want to do my own comic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I'm writing it with the view of if this ever gets made, if it ever is, is a com does turn into a comic, fine. If not, I told the story that I, I wrote the, down the story that I wanted to tell, you know, and that's, I'm fine with that too, you know, and um, as far as, as movies go, um, I'm really, really comfortable making independent films. I don't know how much I would ever want to work for a studio or, uh, or a big, you know, a big studio or something like that. That's, that's preposterous for me to even think that, I think. Um but I, I just, um, I don't know. I guess if you put them both together, I'm interested in telling stories, you know, okay. and, um, yeah, and that's, that's the thing for me, I guess, is just that I, I enjoy telling stories and, and, um, I hope people like what I like, you know, see, I did, um, I, I got it around here somewhere if I'd have to dig, but, um, I, I, was going to make a comic at one point. And I realized trying to keep artists, trying to deal with stuff like that. I'm like, so it just slowly transferred from comic book script to movie script. Mm -hmm. And I've got people interested. I'm like, I just don't think I can make it. But, you know, if I, if I make it an ep, because I'm, I've also cut it down to like episodes instead of a movie. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, man, maybe if I can get somebody interested, do like a, 15 minute short film of it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I get some interest in it, but you know, it, it's weird going from writing comics because you know, you can do whatever. There's no worry about restraint or budget. Right. And then you look at making film and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I can't do that. Yeah. Um, can't put a car chase in there because people will frown on you driving a car recklessly. Around town yeah. <laughs> just to film it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the things that uh, I was taught about writing movies and, and stuff like that is don't just write the story and just tell the story. and Don't worry about at the time you're writing it, uh, because that does creep in. Oh, man, I can't afford an explosion. I got an explosion written here and I can't I can't afford to, to an explosion or, or, you know, uh, or, you know, stuff like that is stuff yeah. you start thinking about. And I, I think that can hinder you a little bit as far as your imagination and just, just write it just whatever it is in your head just write it and if you need to make adjustments later you can but just get get the story told and get, um, get the story out of your brain yeah, yeah yeah and uh and and i don't know that to me that's like half the half the thing is not worrying about how much this is going to cost or, or what the makeup guy is going to have to do this this and this you know and you know, let all that stuff work itself out later. Just write the story. That that's yeah. where I'm at right now. I've had I've had I end up I was I was an extra in a movie over summer. I end up talking with the director for I don't know half hour or so, and I found out this guy's making his second movie and his first movie. This is a sequel to mm -hmm. had no budget like at all. Mm -hmm. And I went and looked at this movie and I'm like, holy shit, you made this with nothing, like like yeah. 1200 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I got a backer who will give me five grand to make a movie mm -hmm. now, right now. Yeah. Like he, he's got to get producer credits and he'll need money when it's all done. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you did a two hour, almost two hour movie 
for 1200 bucks and I can do this. I got five grand. And I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, look at the, the small budget they had on Godzilla minus one. Yeah. That was a 15 million. Yeah. Tiny budget compared yeah. to, you know, and, and holy cow, the mo the movie that they got out of that 15 million is, is amazing. So you can do great things. Oh yeah. With well, very little money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Look at Evil Dead, the original Evil Dead. It's a Evil classic Dead. now. Yep. They and, made it uh, for pennies. El Mariachi. That's yeah. what was it like three thousand dollars, I think is what mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And he ended up being Robert Rodriguez. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just crazy seeing these guys that go from like little indie films like you know Peter Jackson mm -hmm. who's doing Meet the Bad Feeble, Taste and Bad and, Taste and, 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 Oh my gosh. And, yeah, and then yeah, oh, uh, Dead Alive, and then you're yeah. like, oh, then he's the Hobbit guy and or Lord of the Rings guy, and you're like, and the King Kong guy, and the King Kong guy, and you're like, how do you go from point A to point B? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you go from making schlocky horror films? Because mm -hmm. realistically, the only big movie he did between his cheesy horror and Lord of the Rings was Frighteners. Frighteners, yeah. Was it the Deadly Bones, or did he make that? Oh after? yeah, yeah, Lovely Bones. Lovely Bones, yeah. Lovely Bones. He did those, but you're like, yeah. how do you go from mm -hmm. here to here? That's that's an insane transfer or yeah. transformation, I guess. So, but uh, yeah, it's 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 awesome, man. And and um, it, it's weird being uh, um, a movie nerd nowadays because there's literally so much. And I'm watching so much. And well, think about like when we were kids, you, you there was stuff out there, but we didn't have access to it. No. Now with the press of a couple of buttons, you can watch almost anything you've ever wanted to watch. I I know it, it's it's I I talked about this the other day. I was like, man, I was like, if you would have told 14 year old Paul that lived out in the country. It had five TV channels mm -hmm. that there was gonna be a day where I could sit there and whatever movie i wanted to watch at the yeah. touch of my thumb i was like i'd have been like a 900 pound shut-in i would have never left my house <laughs> they would have had to cut the wall out to get me out of the house because i would have just sat there and be like this is what i life is now because I'm, I'm, I'm a tv addict i'm not gonna yeah. lie i love tv and, and and my wife hates it um it's the first thing i do when i get up in the morning is i turn the tv on and the last thing i do before i go to bed is turn the tv mm -hmm. off Mm -hmm. And now I work for myself, so I literally watch TV probably sixteen to eighteen hours a day. Mm -hmm. I'm not even when like right now. If you watch, you can see the light changing here. Yeah. The TV's on <laughs> <laughs> because I. It's a comfort thing. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's a yeah, OCD yeah. comfort thing, and and um, uh, my wife hates it because she's like, ah, you just always turn the TV on. I'll go to other people's houses. And if they're, if I'm not paying attention, next thing you'll know, I'll have the remote mm -hmm. and I'll be watching people's TVs. <laughs> and Tina's like, I'll put the remote down. You don't live here. And I'm like, it's not what I started out there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know how that goes. I'm the same way. I, I was like, man, I got three channels. And Kiss Meets the Phantom comes on Sunday night and I'll never get to see it, I'm sure, because, you know, now I can watch it anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? Oh, man, I love that movie. It's so bad. I love, I love it. I love it. I'm I a big I Kiss my, I, I still have my old VHS tape copy. So Do you? The original, yeah. I got a DVD of it. It's probably what it's ripped from, the old VHS. The VHS, yeah. Oh, Which was well, ripped from like, TV. My, my, one, my one buddy bought me for Christmas because one of my favorite movies is The Keep. Oh, God, yeah. And I've, I have two VHS copies and I, I, and this is before. I think, I think it's on Prime. I think it's, I think it's there. Mm -hmm. But the, the the best quality copy you could ever get was the Laserdisc. Yeah, because there's no DVDs, there's no Blu-rays, there's nothing. Right. A couple of years ago for Christmas, my buddy comes in. He goes, "I bought you something," and he reaches in his bag and he pulls it out, and it's the Keep on Laserdisc. Wow. And I'm like, oh my god, thank you. This is the best. <laughs> And uh, now I keep hearing that the, the the man cut still exists, and I'm like, oh, that would be awesome if we ever get that, but it's never going to happen. It's no, I don't think so. So that's what a great movie. 
Oh man. And, and uh, the, the, the weird part about it is that I love both the movie and the book mm -hmm. and people give me shit because I'm like, dude, it's two separate things. It's yeah. two completely different monsters. I was like one, it's the book is and the movie are nothing alike. I think the characters you have the same name and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I love it. I even have a signed copy around here somewhere on a shelf somewhere. I got a one of 100 copy or something like that from oh, cool. Yeah. Back in the day, I, I mm -hmm. ordered it and I was like, I'll never get this. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I got it. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're, 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 that's 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 the kind of stuff people come to me. I used to do a Halloween movie thing at my shop, mm -hmm. and uh, my son hated the last one we did because he's like, "You're evil," because I had to leave like like midway through. So we're watching. Um, oh, we watched the Beyond. Um, Fulci, Fulci's Beyond, yeah. Then uh, we did a local movie uh, called Kill That Bitch, which is a werewolf movie. And then I started society and then I left. Oh my God. And, you are evil. <laughs> and then the, no, it gets worse. The movie that was after that mm. was Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> oh my God. Uh. And, and everybody, because <laughs> I came back in the middle of Cannibal Holocaust because I ran, I had to go, because it was something to do with my, my youngest son. And I took off and I came back and um, I walked in there and I finished up the movie and we turned the lights back on. And there's like 20 people just, <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> and my son looks at me and goes, you didn't even give us a palate cleanser. You just were like pushing people in the deep end of the pool. Uh -huh. like, them yeah, stay. man, that one's rough. That one's rough. That's, and, one, uh, that's one I can, I've, I've watched it only a couple of times, but I, it's hard for me to go back and watch a lot. Uh, but wow, what a great movie. <laughs> It is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like finding out that we, that we might be getting society too after all these years. Really? Yeah. There was rumors of it. I just read it two weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it was the uh, society to the shunting. Oh my <laughs> God. Of all movies to get a sequel to. Well, you think now would be the time to do it because you have this whole class war going on and stuff like that yeah, now. yeah true true and somebody pointed out and they're like so people were like dusting off the the property and i guess mm -hmm. it's I it guess is it's, showing up on a lot of streaming services and stuff here yeah today. and uh oh my god no I, I i just remember showing that to people for the first time i was like here you need to watch this fuck <laughs> mm -hmm. holy cow is it we covered that too on 80s not too long ago so, oh man! So, it, with, with doing all these movies, what what's the one movie that you've had to watch and review that you're just like, why, why, why did we just do that? Oh. Um, <laughs> there's a movie whose title is "The God Monster of Indian Flats." Oh, about the the killer sheep, the big sheep, the movie. big sheep, yeah, yeah, and uh, that movie bamboozled the shit out of me i had no idea what was going on in this movie and uh and all the other guys were going that's right it's it's so bad it's terrible but it's so good because it's so terrible uh, that, that is one that i uh, totally perplexed me why why somebody would would, would want to watch that it, it is horrible and i think it's on prime now uh, yeah yeah i, I just seen it the other day or i didn't watch it but i seen it pop yeah. up on was scrolling through the other day yeah there, there there's so many horror movies that you're just like yeah there's a lot of them we just covered oh, one called um uh, uh it was like a texas chainsaw ripoff where this pig farmer who had this huge you know mentally uh challenged son who started killing teenagers because they were messing with his hogs. slaughterhouse slaughterhouse yeah 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 and yeah. um uh, and and that, that one too i was like uh it, that one wasn't as bad as god monster of sure, indian yeah. flats but uh but yeah there's some stinkers out there but but some i love a stinker sometimes you know yeah. uh but yeah the one i just said i threw my hands up in the air was god monster i just did not get that how that got made how how i just I, don't know 
I, I guess I think can... I think so many of these horror movies got made as basically just tax write offs or shelters or just out and yeah. out scams. Yeah, they were like, yeah. we need to put something out, so they put together a, a shitty movie because they they bamboozled people out of like a million dollars. Yeah, something. right. So they throw twenty grand into a movie mm-hmm. and goes, hey, see, this is what we did. So <laughs> if I recall correctly, that's probably what happened with uh, God Monster, uh, in some form or other, they owed somebody money and decide to make a movie but i'd like hearing all these horror stories about these directors that get conned into having to film a movie that they yeah. did nothing to do with and you're just yeah. like just don't sign contracts when you're when you're young in hollywood mm-hmm. that's what uh, what channing tatum said that of all people he's like <laughs> i would have never made all the movies he goes i come into hollywood and they're like okay we'll give you a five picture deal and i signed it and he goes then i get famous after the second movie mm-hmm. and i still gotta make three more movies yeah them. <laughs> yeah. So, oh man, but uh, I'm gonna have to get ready to wrap it up myself. I gotta get upstairs so the, the wife can go to bed, and I got okay. more editing to do. Um, but we're gonna do the. Um, where can people find you online at? Uh, you can look me up on Facebook. Just you know, Chad Hunt. Um, Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Um, it's Chatty C H A D D Y underscore Baby. Chatty baby. That's what my friend's daughter called me when she was a little baby. Uh, I don't know why that always stuck, but I'm on that Instagram on TikTok, uh, Chad Hunt. Um, what else am I on? Gruesomemagazine.com. You can go on gruesomemagazine.com and check out all our um, um, podcasts and reviews of monster movies and horror in general. And we also do new films as well. We review new stuff as well. But I love those uh, Decades of Horror ones because I love revisiting some of those old films. Um, and we also have a YouTube channel. It's youtube.com uh, slash gruesome magazine. Um, and uh, you can go there and watch uh, a lot of our videos there too as well. So I'm all over the place, man. <laughs> ooh, ooh, you, you, like I said, man, I don't know how you do it. Uh, I'm a busy man, and and I, I am my own boss, and I still am way behind with everything. And you're uh, killing it. Yeah, it, it's. It, I'll tell you what, it's it's challenging sometimes when you got to watch a movie and it's t- two hours before the podcast, and you're you're trying to find a setting that'll play it at twice the speed so you can get through it. It it, it can be challenging sometimes. Some of them are worth fast forwarding through, though. I have to say, man, mine is is that. Um, we, we, we said this earlier about everybody's like, it's the scariest movie. It's the scariest movie. And uh, me and my wife always look at each other because we'll go see those movies and we'll like look at each other and go, are, are we that desensitized? Because that was not a scary movie. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like. <laughs> Every time I hear somebody say that, I go, I remember when I was a normie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ones that kill me are the ones I go in that I have absolutely. I'm like, this movie's going to suck. Um Underwater, Kristen Stewart. I, I don't think she's ever done really anything good. And but I'm like, okay, I, I love underwater horror, mm-hmm. so I'm like, I'm gonna go see it. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, God dang, this is good. And of course, we know the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, all right, yeah, that was good. Shit, <laughs> it was like yeah. I, I yeah. felt bad for liking it because she's mm-hmm. in it. I liked and, it uh, too. I didn't. I thought I would hate that movie, and I liked it. I liked it. Yep. And the fact that that was shelved for like two years is mm-hmm. just like, damn, really? Yeah. Well, during that Fox uh, Disney deal. So, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, before we go, um, I got to ask you is there a movie out that maybe people have not seen that they really need to go see? <clears throat> out right now? Um, or even like a movie, like movie rated or reviewed or whatever, just something that people you think may not have seen? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I know there's one coming out tomorrow um, in a dark place, I think it's called. In darkness or something, something like that about these. It looks like cavemen, cavemen or something who are being chased by some kind of monster. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the uh, um, the prehistoric horror. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that, yeah. so. I, I kind of want to see that and Lisa Frankenstein. Lisa Which, Frankenstein? Lisa Frankenstein. It's a 
Diablo Cody and oh, somebody famous's daughter is directing it. And it's in the same universe as Jennifer's body. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's about a girl who brings her boyfriend back. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, Ooh. it's a weird fucked up retelling of Frankenstein. So mm. and I'm like, <sighs> I didn't want to like Jennifer's body either, but here we are. So I'm going to see this. One. Yeah. <laughs> we suffer. Then we move along. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't I, care. I didn't care for it. I don't know. Jennifer's see, body. I, Jennifer's body, I I thought it caught me at the right time because I tried to go back and rewatch it about two years ago, and it was like, oh, okay. But it, when I when I first watched it, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then there's movies that are the other way that I rewatched again. I'm like, fuck, I did not like this. Why? Mm -hmm. And then there's movies that everybody goes, give it a second chance, and I'm like, this movie still sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 All right. Well, sir, I thank you so much. And now that we've got you got your computer taken care of and man, and, what a week. And I and, and I hope all your family issues got taken care yeah, of. Yeah, we're all good. Everything's okay, everything's good. 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 And uh, Dory. Oh, cool, cool. And um I know I know this is probably a long shot, but I, I, I will I will formally invite you if you would like to. Um I have my own comic book convention here in my hometown. And uh, it's coming up June twenty second, twenty third. Uh, but there's there's the invite if you if you oh, would like okay. to make the, make the make the trek up here. I would I would yeah. So but there, there's the formal invite. <laughs> where are you? Where are you again? I'm in Piqua, Ohio. I am okay. about thirty minutes north of Dayton. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. We 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 be, we keep growing. We keep growing. We keep growing. We keep growing. We were supposed to go huge this year. Then that venue got taken away from us. So we had to go to a different venue that is about the same size, but I'm doing two days instead of one. Mm -hmm. So I'm like doubling down a little bit. So, oh, okay. Yeah. And hopefully I won't lose my ass because <laughs> uh, I hope not. I hope yeah. Not. So, but uh, no, it's, 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 it's done really good up until this year. Um, we've been, we were running it in a mall. And then the mall got sold in the middle of us running it there. And they didn't want us to leave, but they kept taking space away from us. So we kept getting smaller and smaller when mm -hmm. I kept wanting to go bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So I finally was just like, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm going yeah. somewhere else. And they're like, please don't. I'm like, no, yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. So I walked away we, from it. We started our little uh, horror film fest. It was just in a, a one screen theater maybe 50 chairs and they were like table chairs <laughs> they weren't very you know it was like we lined them all up and everything and and over the years this is our eighth year eighth or ninth year and and uh we're showing movies in them in a movie theater actually this time so it's ours has grown a lot our film festival oh wreak havoc productions Re better, there we go yeah better, so. better plug them too but uh yeah and so, uh when when's your festival it's usually uh, October, a little bit before uh, Halloween, maybe okay. end of September, first week of October, something like that. Cool. Uh, usually around that time. So cool. come cool. on down and see us. Hell yeah, we'll try to make the to make the trek down there. So I'll let you, I'll, I'll let you know if any of the movies are are, are any good this year. So. <laughs> I'm also a judge too. too so. <laughs> Not a good year. Not a good, hey, hey, maybe, maybe I'll have my movie done and I can yeah. turn this short. Yeah. Because because right now I'm getting ready. Hopefully within the next maybe month I might shoot a trailer for it so I can like put it on Indiegogo. Maybe garner a little money. Maybe mm -hmm. get some people in. Okay. You know. Yeah. And go from there. So we'll uh, <laughs> shoot you um, a voucher so you can put it in. We'll put it in the film festival for, for cool. nothing. Because even if even if I get the trailer done, I will I will just give you the trailer to go throw in there between movies or something. Okay. <laughs> so right. I, I when when I ex <clears throat> sorry when I exit out here, I'll tell you the the title of the movie and stuff because I don't really want that to get out yet. But okay, I'll tell you. So all right, well, thank you so much, sir. Um, this has been fun. Yeah, um, I had a blast. I, I really I really hope one day to be able to like hang out with you in person because mm -hmm. we've talked online a handful of times and yeah. now we get to do this and and uh, I'd love to actually like 
hang out and bullshit and go get something to drink, you know. Whatever. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do so, that. All right. Well, I'm going to exit out of here, and uh, this is the end of the episode. So, boom. Thank you.